Hey friends, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be me discussing the book, the books by Filipino authors that I think you guys should uh, keep an eye out for in 2022, slash the books that I'll be keeping an eye out for in 2022. So let's just kind of jump right into the video. So clearly a very different setup today. I didn't feel like standing by my shelves, so I decided to sit on my bed. So you get a better view of what my room's supposed to look like. Really, there's not much left. The closet's behind you. My other bookshelf is chilling next to you. And then desk and window. But today I wanted to talk about some of the, uh, the Filipino authored books that are coming out in 2022. I can't take credit for this list. I found all of these on Kate's list. So I will leave her blog link down below for y'all so you guys can find out and see what else. I didn't take all the books from her list, though I am interested in all of them. I just wanted to keep... A nice number to keep an eye out for myself because I'm very forgetful this time around. So like I said this is the comprehensive list. Um, I found all of these on Kate's blog post so again we'll leave that link down below. It was kind of annoying because I tried looking on my own because Kate's blog is the blog post is literally the first blog like the first link you'll find when you look up Filipino author books in 2022 and I couldn't find anything on 22 releases 2022 releases just in like um, the usual like books you'll see when you look up Filipino authors which isn't a bad thing. But definitely not what I was looking for. So in the future, I guess I will have to do my due diligence and make sure that I know what books are coming out. But the first one's already out. It came out January 6th, and that is Glad You Exist by Kay Rockwell. This is a YA contemporary romance following young Liz who kind of lost all of her friends. I think her freshman year, and now three years later, upon graduation, she's finding out that she feels just a little, a tad bit lonely in life. Brad, on the other hand, has been trying to fill the void that Liz left behind after their falling out with other friendships and other like meaningless ex activities. Now, with senior, with senior year coming to a close, they kind of bump into each other again and kind of start off this friendship. And depending on like their secrets and whether or not they're able to get over the hurdle of who they once were versus who they are now, something kind of develops. This seems like a very cute like friends to lovers romance, but then also friends to enemies to friends to lovers which is a very cute um, progression. So I'll have to keep my eye out in the bookstore when I go by sometime this week and see where that is because I really would like to read that book sometime soon. And I wish I had known about it sooner because I would be reading it this month because this month I'm reading nothing but basically romances. The next book is one that I'm super excited for and that is Homicide and Halo Halo by Mia Pima Nansala. This, is, uh, this comes out February 8th. This is an adult a uh, cozy mystery, or I, I like to say, I like to say, a light thriller. Following young Leela as she returns home to help with her family restaurant after dropping out of college when her fiance and her break up. This is the sequel to this, so I can't say more. But the first book to the series is Arsenic and Adobo, and this follows her, as I said, when she goes home to help her family's restaurant out and becomes a prime suspect in her ex-boyfriend's murder after he dies when she feeds him food. Can't give too much detail into this because, again, sequel. But I just love it, and I love that Longanisa, the little wiener dog, Longanisa is a sausage I got in the Philippines. So, you know, it's perfect, and I love Halo Halo, and it's just, it's going to be a good time. I'm going to probably go to the store sometime soon and buy this, because I have to get some books for videos anyway. Hopefully it's there, because I've been having, in my area at least, I've been having issues of getting books that are, have been released. Like Arsenic and Adobo, I had to wait like a week for that to come out. And then Malibu Rising, which I believe you can kind of see in the shadow, like right there. I couldn't find it in shelves for like a month, like one, like two months. So, here, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. The next one's actually a reprint, and that is Atlas 6 by Olivia Blake. This comes out March 1st, and I will be picking this up. Um, one, I, I have heard this book a lot on TikTok. I have seen a lot of people on booktube read it. So it has been on my radar, but I did not know this was Filipino authored. So I am shocked, I am stunned, and I am excited. This I, do, I didn't read a ton of the synopsis for y'all because I feel like it is dark academia, it is secret societies, it is fantasy. So I didn't want to say, to like know much about it just in case like it um, hindered my reading in any way. But basically it's dark academia, secret societies, fantasy, lots of magic, and secret inclusions. I think it is also LGBT, so it's just an extra added bonus for y'all. I will be picking up this reprint. I know that I think, I want to say it's like Illumicrate came out with like an announcement of like their the box that will be coming with their version of it. And if that is Illumicrate, I will throw it up here. But um, I want it, but I also know that I should probably read the book first before I figure out if I want to spend the extra money on a box 
of a book that I may or may not like. But yeah, super excited for this one because I have heard really good things from people that I trust on booktube as well as there are a lot of tiktokers who have suggested reading this book and like while Dark Academia and I don't always get along, I am here for Dark Academia written by someone who is not white. The next one is A Match Made in Lipa by Carla de Guzman. This comes out March 8th. This is a YA, cont this is a YA, this is an adult um, contemporary romance following young chocolate maker and shop owner Kira who isn't really looking for love and ends up going on a vacation because you know she has a lot of things on her mind so vacation is kind of a must and runs into an old childhood crush of her Santee. Now these two share a pretty steamy little kiss and they don't think much of it because they uh, he she he doesn't he they have long distance um, I believe he lives in, in Manila if, and if I pronounce it incorrectly I'm so sorry I typically say Manila because I was taught the English way, but I recently learned that it's now, it's like Manila, so... Which is a confusing time for me, but I'm trying to pronounce it correctly, but no one taught me otherwise. That is until he moves back to their hometown, and that is actually the least of their concerns, specifically her concerns. I'm not going to get too much more into it because I feel like it's a lot, it's like a plot twist. It, it It's kind of like the big thing that is important to the book, and I don't want to spoil it from there, so we'll just leave it. The next one also comes out in March, and that is Of Myths and Men by Catherine DeLosa. This comes out in on March 15th. This is a YA high fantasy, or yeah, a YA, I guess, no, sci-fi? Yeah, a YA sci-fi following 18-year-old Ava, who is basically a pretty, like, well-known hero. She saved the world 152 times in all the video games that she has played. That is until one day she runs into white hair Brad who may or may not be a vampire and tells her all about the secret world of like werewolves and macacabaos and she is now thrust into this world that is not human because they are not even that fictional world they're actually aliens to save the world in real time this time and not through a video game. This one sounds super interesting. I love the fact that she, Catherine decided to dealt to like blend Filipino and Western mythologies which I'm intrigued by and like it's also video games and I want to see how her brain's gonna work trying to save the world when she's only really saved the world through video games so I'm gonna keep an eye out for that. The next one is A Tiny Shift Upward by Melissa Chaburn. This comes out April, tw April 12th and this is an adult fantasy where Marina kind of wakes up having a credit day because she is dead. Now while she is dead, she is transformed into something called the Aswang, which is part of Filipino mythology. And because of this tra sudden transformation, she now has access to people's memories. She is now on the hunt to figure out who her killer is. I'm super excited for this. Again, I love me a nice blend of like... Filipino mythologies in like a very modern world so I'm super excited to see how Catherine has a kind of um and I don't want to say manipulated because there are different versions of Aswang has adjusted the myth or used the myth to her advantage to turn it into a more um modern situation and I love me a good mystery as well so the next one is The Spirit Cuts Through the Water by Simon Jimenez this comes out May May is an adult fantasy following a young warrior and a city who has been basically taken over or ruled by a tyrannical emperor and his three horrible sons who destroy the countryside and all their resources. One day this warrior while on his post ends up finding the mythic empress who has uh, escaped and now he has two choices either turn her in and be free of this mess or he helps her overthrow the government that's been kind of fucking everyone over. Super excited for this one. I have had Simon Jimenez on my radar, but I'm super excited for their sophomore novel. Um, so I'll be checking that out once that comes out and hopefully it's in shelves because again, lots of struggle with my Barnes and Noble in this area for some reason. I'm hoping that the sale cleared out a lot of their stock and they can fill it back in, but genuinely do not know what the case is with my Barnes and Noble. Like I've had to buy a lot of books that I have been excited for via Amazon which I'm worried for when it comes to releases that I'm expecting come the holiday season that I really, really need. The next one is actually a middle grade, and that is Freddy vs. the Family Curse by Trace Baduan. This is about a young boy named Freddy whose entire family has been cursed, and now he has to interact with his, um, I suppose, his ancestors to figure out what happened to the curse, what this is, and how to break it. And if he doesn't, he's going to be stuck in an amulet forever and ever and ever and ever. The next one comes out summer during on July 19th, and that is Dauntless by Elisa A. Bonin. This is a YA high fi sci-fi? 
um, YA fantasy and it's also LGBT or yeah it has an LGBT rep in it and this I'm just gonna read the description because again I don't think my brain processed it when I read it but I'm excited for it nonetheless because look at the cover but this is about a young teen um, description this is a synopsis a young teen girl must bring together two broken worlds in order to save her lush, her nation in this lush Filipino inspired young adult fantasy novel. Seri's world is defined by ver by very clear rules. The beasts prowl the forest paths and hunt people. The valiant explore the unknown world, kill beasts, and gain strength from the armor they make from them. As an assistant to the Eshai Unbroken, the, a young Valor commander with a near mythical reputation, Seri must first hand has seen firsthand the struggle to keep the beasts at bay and ensure the safety of sp the safety of the spreading trees where the people make their homes. That was how it had always been and how it always would be until the day Seti encounters Sana. Sana is impossibly a stranger from the unknown world who can communicate with the beasts. A fact that makes Seti begin to doubt everything she's ever been taught. As Seti and Sana grow closer, their worlds begin to collide with deadly consequences. Somehow with the world on the brink of a war, Seti will have to find a way to make peace. This genuinely sounds freaking amazing. I am so stoked. I, I, it, I, I don't even, I can't even say everything I've been waiting for. It's just, it sounds so good. Like, I don't even know what to say. Like, I'm going to pick it up the day it comes out. Um, so I'm going to have my calendar set to it. So that way I have it when it comes out. And finally, the last book is another middle grade novel that comes out October 18th, and that is Mariquit in the Ocean of Stars by Caris Avenado Cruz. Basically, this is about young Mariquit who is only like 9 or 10, and she basically only wears recycled clothing. Meanwhile, her mother is a renowned se seamstress in their barrio after her, father and after her father and her brother go missing at s and is lost at sea. And the only thing that Mariquit wants for her 10th birthday is a nice brand new dress. Now, when her mother hands her a patchwork dress, Mariquit is very bent on not wearing it. In fact, she says a vehement no. That is until shadow creatures sweep her up and take her into a world that is not her own. Now, no longer in, a, in, a, in the human world, she finds out that the dress that her mother made that she thinks is patchwork and is not very important or cute is actually a map to get them out of the, to get her and her family out of this realm without being eaten by all the monsters. Who would have thought? I'm super stoked for this one. The cover is gorgeous. I love the main character's name. The title is gorgeous. Everything about this is gorgeous. I haven't read middle grade in like a hot minute. So like, here we go again. But I'm super stoked for this. It is also a debut novel. So very excited to see what Karis is able to create. But that is it for the Filipino authored books I'm looking forward to in 2022. This isn't the fullest, like I said, and it's not the fullest of authors that I am looking forward to, at least that are Filipino authored. I will leave Kate's blog post down below for y'all in, in case you guys want to see what books, what other books are coming out and what you should be, what you want, might want to look out for. I know I have a couple books on there that I haven't mentioned because I don't want to take the entire list. But if any of these books interest you and you want me to do uh, a review on it, or a vlog on it, let me know and I'll go ahead and do that once those books are released. But if any of these books interested you and you want to read them, let me know in the comments. But until next time, hopefully you guys are having a wonderful week. And if not, hopefully your week gets better for you. This comes out on like Monday, so hopefully your Monday's been good. But until next time, hopefully you guys are having a good time. Stay safe. Bye.